we're going to be looking at finding your people. And last week, Roy started to speak about um, relationships and why they're important and finding our people. And this week, I kind of want to expand on that just a little bit and look at how we, how we find our people. For me, I first found my people when I walked into Net Church Sittingbourne. I was 14 at the time, and I just felt like I, I belonged. And then I found my people again in September when I walked into this building. And you guys now are my people. And so this morning, I want us to, to start to see that actually we're not just a group of people who come together on a Sunday, but actually we're, we need to do life together. We need to be in community together. And this morning, God's going to give us some really practical ways through me of how we can do that. So quite often, we can um, feel very alone in this kind of era that we find ourselves. For me personally, you know that app on your phone, um, it's like it tells you how long you've spent on social media and stuff. I put it on my kid's phone because it can switch off all of the games and stuff after like an hour or two hours. And for about two months... I was like, I was not putting that on my phone because I knew exactly what would happen. I'd be on it and all of a sudden all my social media would switch off and it would make me really aware of how much time I was actually wasting. So I kind of was like, no, I'm not putting that on my phone. And then about a month ago, I thought, do you know what, Terry, it's time for you to take responsibility (laughs) for your actions and how long you're spending scrolling through the pages of Instagram. So I put it onto my phone and I was so shocked. The first day it came up, you've spent five hours on social media. I was like, what? Five hours of my life today I've spent on social media. That included WhatsApp and messages. I am quite a pastoral person, so I do like to check in on people. That is, that is me trying to justify the five hours that I've spent. But at least two of those hours in a 24-hour period were on Instagram. And I was so shocked. I was like, oh my goodness, Like I'm wasting so much time. But I feel like I'm connecting with people, but actually I'm not really because I'm not seeing anyone face to face, I'm just seeing the stuff on Instagram and all the stuff on social media. And as I started preparing this message, I was started to look at um, some of the studies that have been done about how people can be so lonely, but have hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram and can be like friends of 500 on Facebook, but actually they don't ever go outside of their house. They just sit behind their screens or their phones and, and they connect with people through that. And, God doesn't want us to be a people that connect for a screen. God wants us to be people who are in relationship with people. That means going out and seeing people face to face, not just sending them a message, which I am guilty of, just pinging them a quick message saying, hey, how's life? That's not the sort of deep relationship that God's calling us to. I want us to look at the different levels of, of friendship, and Keely kind of touched on this in the video that we just saw. So I thought about like a circle, and so you've got your outer circle friends. Those are people like maybe your neighbours, your colleagues, people that you see and you'd have like a surface conversation with. You might be like, hey, how's your day? How's the weather? Yes, good. And that's where it stops. And as I was reading this, I thought, actually, we can be like that with people in church. We could see them on a Sunday and be like, oh, hey, how's your week? Yeah, it was great. And that's where it finishes. But actually, when we're in church with people, we shouldn't be outer circle friends with those people. The people in this room should be people that are our middle circle friends, at least. The ones that we can, we can share stuff with, the ones that we can go to when we're struggling a little bit. The people that, are, that we know love us and care for us and have got our back. So your middle circle friends are good friends, people that you enjoy hanging around with, people that you'd share stories with, have fun with. You've got like a level of emotional investment in them so you can share with them. You wouldn't necessarily share your deepest um, struggles that you're going through with them, but those are people that love you and care for you. And then you've got your inner circle friends. So these people are the ones that are super, super close to you. They're people that know, know you inside and out. They know everything about you. They know when you're struggling and they know to speak in. The people that you can share your deepest struggles and your hurts with and you know that you can trust them because they're your inner circle friends. Now those kind of friends, you've probably got maybe between one and five of those friends. That's not like everybody, you're not going to go and bleed on everyone and say, this is what's going on, but those are the people that you you know that in a moment of your most desperate, desperate crisis you can phone and they will will have your back and they will come to, to your rescue. And this morning God wants me to challenge you on 
Who, who are your inner circle friends? Who are those people that you've got that you know no matter what, you could pick up the phone and you could call them and they'd come to you and they'd spend time with you and they'd pray with you and they'd give you good, good, sound advice? So how do, we, so how do we get to that point where we move from having our inner circle friends, our middle circle friends, and how do we get to a point where our church become our middle circle friends? That's what really, really God has laid on my heart this morning, that we don't just be a people who come on a Sunday, but we become a people who are community together. So how do we do that? Well, when we're forming relationships, there's three things that I'm going to look at. Three, <laughs> three things, not four, three. My little finger wouldn't go down then. We're going to look at forming relationships. How do we start well? How do we make sure that we are forming good, strong relationships? What are some foundations that we can lay when we're starting to build friendships, relationships? And I'm not just talking about dating. I'm talking about family relationships, work relationships. I'm covering everything this morning. And then thirdly, boundaries. What boundaries can we put in place for each of those areas? Are you ready? So what level of friendships do you currently have? Just think for a moment, if, who have you got who's actually in your inner circle? Who's the, who have you got that you can rely on any time of the day, no matter what, that you can call up? And I want you just to write down in your books, inner circle friends, just to remind yourself that you need to make sure that you've got those kinds of people. And I want you to make sure that those people are people who are solid Christians. They're not people who are just going to tickle your ear, like the Bible says. It's not people who's just going to say, oh, they're there, yeah, that's really bad, and that's it, and leave you there. You want to find people who are going to encourage you and support you and bring you out of the stuff that you're going through. In Proverbs 18, verse 24, it says this, One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. There's a really good example of this kind of friendship in the Bible with David and Jonathan. And you can read the story of that in 2 Samuel, uh, verse 1, 25 and 26. And it's talking about their relationship. So they became friends um, following the battle which David killed Goliath. And despite the hardships they both faced, they remained faithful to each other and protected each other from harm. Jonathan even risked his life when David, um, when King Saul was trying to kill David. So have you got a friend who would literally risk their life for you? I can think of probably maybe two or three people that I'd say would do that. Mostly the ones that are sitting on the front row. But there are people in my life who I know, if I'm in a situation like that, they would literally risk their life for me. And it's so important that we have people like that around us. So how can we find people that we can get to this point with? Well, we're lucky actually to be in a church that put on so many amazing ministries. We've got Loving Later Life group during the week. We've got a toddler group during the week. We've got a youth group. We've got, <laughs> I've got your plug in, Andrew. And we've also got 18 to 25s, little plug for that. If you are 18 to 30 actually, because I'm still counting myself in that group. Um, we're going for lunch after church, so come with us. Just come and hang out. We're going to go around to Weatherspoons after church. So just come with us and hang out, and then you can start to build relationship with people like that. Make sure you're in a connect group. Yeah. That's inclusive. That literally includes everyone. Our church is good, aren't they? They've got something for everybody. So make sure you get plugged into the stuff that's going on, because that's where you're going to find community, and you're going to find friendships. It's funny, the... Um, the poll results about online dating, one of the things I was thinking about was how do we start dating? Sometimes it's in church it's easy, you're like, oh no, I mustn't talk about that, I mustn't talk about dating. And coming from a youth pastor background, I would say, no, don't date. But having moved from youth pastor to young adults pastor, now I'm in this period where actually it's all right for them to date. So how do we start dating? How do we date well? Well, I think it's all right to look when you're of an age, when you can, youth in the room, hear me, it's not time for you to look, <laughs> it is time for you to wait. But actually once we feel like we're a whole person and you've spoken to your inner circle people, it's alright for you to look. Maybe not on Tinder, let's not start looking there, but why don't we go to conferences? Why don't we start seeing, uh, seeing people go into young adults and meet other people, meet new people? Because it's not wrong for us to date, God wants us to be in relationship. 
I know, it's hard for me to get my head around that from a youth pastor, but I'm getting there. Also, God wants you to know this morning that you're not alone. Don't stay in the place of the wilderness because you feel isolated. I love what Emily spoke about when she said that sometimes you could be surrounded by people, but you could feel so alone, and that's so true. But God doesn't want you to be in that place. God wants you to to move from a place of isolation and move to a place where you're whole and you're in community. So get yourself in a place where you're in community, like Emily did. She didn't stay in the place she was at university. She moved. She physically moved herself to be living with her godparents. And sometimes it takes that step of us being really brave and actually saying, God, I'm going to take this step and I know that it's going to be hard and it might be a little bit tricky, but I trust you and I know that you've got people for me. And he so has, he's so got people for you. The other part of forming relationships is understanding that healthy relationships take time. It's not, e- it's not just a quick, easy fix. It's not like, right, I'm going to go to the MYA lunch and then I'm going to have a best friend and then life's going to be sweet. It's not as easy as that. It takes time and it takes effort and it takes us putting, putting stuff in as much as getting stuff out. We've got to be present to make relationships work. Have you ever been out for dinner with someone and they've just been on their phones? <laughs> and you're sitting and you're trying to have a conversation and they're just sitting on their phone. Don't do that. Don't be those people. It's so frustrating. If you're in a room, be present. Be, be there with that person. Don't be sitting on your phone and, or being distracted by anything else because it takes us being present to be in good, healthy relationships. Being present also means that we've got to make time to spend with real people. Like I said before, let's not be a people who are just interacting behind a screen. Let's make time in our day for people. If I took those five hours a day that I spent on social media and actually went for a coffee with someone, that would be so much of a better use of my time. How do I have five hours spare with three children and a dog? I don't know, but I did. You've also got to be really reliable. I hate when, when people say, oh, yeah, 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 I'll meet you for coffee, and then don't. Be a people of your word. Be reliable. When you say you're going to be somewhere, be there. I understand that life comes up, but don't be one of those flaky people who are like, yeah, yeah, I want to have a relationship with you, but I'm sorry, I can't. I can't turn up now. Let's be reliable people. And part of that is being the friend, the sister, the colleague that you would want to have. Luke 6, 31 says, do to others as you would have them do to you. That means that when we're in relationship with someone, you've got to be modelling the good, the good friend, the good sister, the good brother, the good child, the good parent. You've got to be modelling the good colleague so that others are going to then give that back to you. But let's start by looking at ourselves. Sometimes I've, I found myself in my teenage years being like, oh, these girls are no good, la, la, la. But actually, I was just as bad. I was not making time for my friends. I wasn't going out and and asking them out for coffee. I felt like, oh, nobody is interested in me. Nobody wants to know what's going on in my life. But was I interested in what was going on in their life? Most of the time, I wasn't. And so, so when we're looking for these deep friendships, we need to be people that are looking at ourselves first as well. We've got to take off the pressure of unrealistic expectations. I can be... I can, be, um, I can fall foul to that often. Sometimes it's really easy for us to expect so much from other people, but everyone's human and everyone's fallible, just as much as we are. And as soon as we take off those unrealistic expectations that we put on people, you'll find that it's much easier to have a deep, meaningful relationship. So family. In our family situations, how do we form good family relationships. Now, as I was preparing this message, I really felt like God gave me a prophetic word this morning, that God wants you to know that even no matter what's gone before, God can form good, strong relationships in your family. So no matter what's happened, no matter how far or how cold the relationship's got, God wants you to know this morning that you can still form good relationships with your family. For me, this is something that I have actually walked And it was only last night, actually, that God reminded me um, about this. And so my parents divorced when I was, I think I was about 22, 23. They both left church and went off and did their own things. 
And in that time, my relationship with my parents was cold. Like, I didn't really see my mum. I didn't see my dad. Um, I'd had Hannah, my middle child at the time, and she was a baby, and my parents weren't around while she was a baby. And our family before that was such a tight unit. Like, we lived in each other's pockets. We did everything together. So that time was really, really hard for me. But God has been able to show me how he can form friendship and relationship with my family again. And God's restored my relationship with my mum. He's still restoring my relationship with my dad. And, and that is incredible that God can take it from a place where we weren't speaking, we didn't see each other, to a place where my mum now has my baby when I come to work. She's in church, she's serving in Sittingbourne Church, she's on the Loving Later Life team and the Welcome team. And just seeing how God can restore and form that is amazing. So God wants you to know that this morning there's restoration and there's healing. And, he, and, and I really felt like that was a specific word this morning for some people. And I want you to take hold of that, that it might be a journey and it might not happen this afternoon, but there is healing and there's restoration. So how can we build good, solid foundations that can last? Well, Matthew 6, 33 says, put God first and everything else will be added. So in our relationships, we may need to make sure that it's always Jesus first. Whether it's a husband, a wife, a child, a friend, a colleague, we need to make sure that we're putting Jesus first in all of our relationships. The second foundation that's really important is commitment. 2 Kings 2, we see a story of Elisha and Elijah. And they're walking along, and, and it's the day that Elijah's going to um, be taken into heaven, and Elisha knows. So these are two friends are walking along. And three times, Elijah says to Elisha, no, leave me, I've been called to, and then says, like, three different destinations. And three times, Elisha says, no, I'm coming with you. Let me read you exactly what he says. It's in 2 Kings 2, verse 4. Elisha says to Elijah, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. Now Elisha knew that Elijah was going to go to heaven. I don't think he did know how it was going to happen. And I don't think he did know um, the circumstance. Like he didn't know that Elijah wasn't going to be killed in some big bloody bloodbath. But yet he still followed him. He still said, no, I'm coming with you. And even when other people and other prophets said to Elisha, but you know that today's the day that God's going to take him, right? Elisha's like, yeah, I know. I'm going with him. I'm going to stay with you. We need to make sure that we've got people who are committed to us, no matter, no matter what it looks like. So when the unknown happens, are the people still committed? And that's how you know if you've got an inner circle friend. When it looks like it's a bit rough, when the future's a little bit uncertain, have you got people who are still there committed to you, no matter what it looks like? The next thing that's a really important foundation is vulnerability. That is something that, that has taken me a while with friendships. When we're vulnerable with people, we let our guard down. We let them know the real us. We don't wear a mask anymore, and we let them see who we are. And sometimes that can be hard, especially when we struggle with like self-worth and, and issues like that. But God wants us to be the real us. He created us in his image, perfect and for a purpose. So he doesn't want us to be hiding behind what we think we should look like or hiding behind what we think we should say. God wants us to be vulnerable with each other because then we can become more like Jesus when we allow those inner circle people to speak into our lives and to, to speak in, in our vulnerability. I read a great quote um, last night it said this that people will forget what you said people will forget what you did but people will never forget how you made them feel and that's the next important foundation empathy my, um, my oldest daughter Grace she's almost 12 and she is the most empathetic person I've ever met she can um, be in a situation and just feel such empathy for everyone around her like even people that she doesn't really know and sometimes I think wow God I need to be more like that I need to be more like Grace in that people aren't always going to remember the stuff that we've said but they're going to remember how we made them feel if you're in a room with someone and and they leave feeling downhearted or feeling like they're not good enough 
then that can, that can be a real hard thing, can't it? We need to be people who are leaving people with more hope, leaving people with more love, making people feel accepted and like they've got a purpose. And this is something that God had really challenged me with maybe a couple of years ago. Um, I've, I've got a really good relationship with my sister um, and it's written, that's the story that's in the, uh, the little booklet. But about a couple of years ago, she was really honest with me. And she said, Terry, sometimes you make me feel like you're really judging me. And I was completely oblivious to that. I didn't even realize that I was making her feel like that. But actually, sometimes the way that we interact with people can leave them feeling a certain way. And we need to guard ourselves to make sure that we don't do that. We need to guard ourselves and make sure that we're leaving people feeling better for being in our presence. And we need to find people who make us feel like that too. It's not all right for people to make us feel like we're not worthy. And it's not all right for people to make us feel like we're not good enough, because we are good enough. So we need to make sure that we're surrounding ourselves with people who make us feel like that. The other foundations that I was thinking of was in parent and child um, scenarios. Like uh, Reuben said, I've got three girls, all at different stages of life. I've got Grace, who's just entering teenage years. Um, Hannah's nearly eight, so she thinks she knows everything. Um, and I've got Faith, who's 11 months old, and who I just found out before the, the worship has start, taken her first step this morning. <laughs> I was like, oh, Grace, did you record it? She's like, nah. <laughs> Thanks, baby. Um, so each of my girls are at different stages of life. And the foundations that I lay are so important in their little lives because it's, I can start to see now how it's affecting how they live. So with Grace, she's so sensitive and she can be really, really worried about new situations and things like that. And the foundations that I've laid in her growing up, making sure that she's at youth, even sending her even when she doesn't feel like going, there's moments that I've been on the school gate and she's been in tears and she's been begging me not to send her and I've sent her anyway. I have gone back to the car and had a little cry, but in that moment I was laying a foundation that said, baby, you can do this. Baby, you've got this. And so we need to be people who are making sure that our, we're laying good foundations in our children. The things that I've learned so far in parenting and, and I have most definitely not learned it all, but it's being consistent, following through with what I say, and making sure that I pick the battles that are worth fighting. I'm learning that one with grace at the moment. Some of the stuff is just not worth pulling her up on. But other stuff that I know is really important, I'll pick her up on. And that leads me to boundaries. We've got to have trust and honesty in our relationships. And boundaries are a way of us creating and building trust. It's important in every relationship that you have. Oftentimes, people think of boundaries when you think of dating. But actually, it's not just when you're dating that you need boundaries. You need boundaries in marriage. You need boundaries in friendships. You need boundaries in your relationship with your work colleagues. And you need boundaries in, in your family relationships. So I'm, I want us to think about um, a relationship that you've got. And I want you to think about what kind of relationship it is. And Keely actually touched on this in her video. Have you got a plus friend? Now that's somebody who is a little bit further on than you in your journey. Someone who you can go to for advice, somebody who can mentor you and teach you and can like help you with things, somebody who you can look up to in a certain area of maybe your ministry, um, maybe in an area that you're struggling with. And then have you got minus friends? Now those, I'm not saying that they're lesser than you, but those are people that you're reaching into and that you, you are mentoring, somebody that is coming behind you, that you're teaching and growing, and someone that you're helping to develop. But then, just as much as that, you need equal friends. Those are the friends that are in your inner circle. And those are the ones that you can really share with. So somebody who, who you can trust, somebody who you can speak to when, you're, when you feel like life's getting too much. We need all three areas of those to be functioning well in relationship and in life. And I want us this morning to just think about who have we got who's a plus? Who's somebody that is just a little bit further ahead of you that you can, you can learn from and you can grow from? But then often we forget about the minus. 
I think for me being in youth, it was, it was a little bit easier because I had leaders that I was trying to encourage and, and raise and grow up. But coming here in Dartford, I've, I've realised that who is there now that I'm mentoring? Who is there now that I'm spending time with and growing and developing? And all of us have got something that we can share with someone to help them grow. It's not just about the leaders. Boundaries are so important because a healthy you makes a healthy relationship. And if you're not a healthy you and you've not got healthy boundaries in place for your own life, then the relationships that you're in are not going to be healthy ones. And this is something that I've seen over and over again. There is an amazing book. I think it's one of the ones that we're going to have out in resources, actually. It's by De Dr. Henry Cloud, and it's, it's called Boundaries. And it is an incredible book. It talks about having boundaries in our life for all of our relationships. And I actually I found out that he does specific ones as well. So there's ones for dating, ones for marriage, one for parenting. So in all of these areas of our relationships, it's so important for us to put boundaries in place. So how do we do that? Well, you need to clearly know what your own values are. What are the things that, that you know that you are not going to step over in all areas of relationship, not just husband and wife, not just dating, not just in singleness? But what are areas that, uh, and your values that you are 100% not going to compromise on? So for me, when I was looking for somebody to date, they had to be a Christian. That was a non-compromise thing. In my family life, it's a non-compromise that we're going to respect each other. So what are the things that you value that are your boundaries? And, and maybe even write them down just so that you can be really clear on it. And then discuss it. Discuss it with the other person in the relationship. Discuss it with your plus friends. Discuss it with your equal friends so that you can get a really rounded view and make sure that you're not just you know, running off with some crazy boundary like, you can't drive my car just because. <laughs> make sure that you're having sound, good wisdom and advice speaking in. And communication is so key. You've got to be able to discuss the boundaries with each other. So if you are dating, make sure that you're discussing the boundaries. Keeping yourselves accountable is also another massive thing. And across all relationships too. We've got to make sure that there's somebody who we can speak to and say, this is my boundary, keep me accountable to that. In friendships, have you got friends who sometimes maybe might take too much of your time or take too much of your energy? Set yourself a boundary with that friend. Say, actually, I'm just going to see them for an hour and then I'm going to go and do something else. Because that way you can keep yourself healthy too. So I want to challenge us this morning. If I just can get the band to come back up. I want to challenge us in the existing relationships and friendships that we have. I want us to to make sure that we're looking at our friendships and, and analysing whether they're healthy. Do a bit of a health check on all of your relationships this week. Have a little look and say, who have I got that, that I'm, is my plus friend? Who have I got that I'm following? Who have I got that I'm bringing on? And who have I got that is my mutual inner circle friends? Do we have boundaries in place in our relationships? It's never too late for us to form good, healthy relationships. No matter where you are right now in your journey, whether it's dating, in marriage, in singleness, in your friendships, it's not too late to put boundaries in place. And this morning I want us to have a little think over this next few weeks, maybe just what boundaries can I put in place to make sure that this is a healthy relationship, that I'm in good community and I'm not being corrupt in my character. And the last thing I want us to, to think about is this, this thought of restoration in family. I didn't want to let this morning go past because I know that God's speaking so clearly about having good, strong, healthy relationships. And I'm just going to ask us to stand and the band are going to play, but I just want to pray for anyone this morning who maybe feels like there's a family relationship that's gone cold. Or maybe there's a friendship that you know that you need restoration in. And I want us just to to be really honest this morning and say, God, I, I need you to move in this situation. I need you to move in my marriage. I need you to move in my friendship. I need you to move in this relationship. Because God hasn't got anyone outside of his reach. There's nobody that's too far away for God to be able to, to bring restoration and to bring relationship back. And it might be that the boundaries might look different to what they were before. But God's going to bring restoration. So I'm just going to pray this morning. We're going to sing. 
But if you do feel like you'd like specific prayer this morning, then I'm going to be at the front. You can come down and we can, we can pray with you there as well. But God, I just thank you for this morning. And God, I pray that, that you will just start to bring restoration, even from this very moment, God. Lord, that you will bring healing and bring peace to people's hearts this morning, Lord. That they will know that there are relationships waiting in their future that are healthy and that have good boundaries. In your mighty name we pray this morning. Amen.